And of course, over here, every human being is back here at every point. In other words, every man is aware of this going on that's, uh, that's here. Uh, and therefore, at this point, then, has a decision to make about what? What to call it. Huh? What he's going to call it. What he's going to call it, which means what? What relationship he's going to take to it. All right, what relationship he's going to take to it. So the term G-O-D then is seen both as a sign which points to this particular going on this. <clears throat> and then also towards the relationship that you take toward uh, that uh, going on this it, it is pointing to. And this is the question that the scriptures put to everybody. Choose you this day who ye are going to serve. Would it be Yahweh or would it be one of the Baals? And uh, therefore, this is the question that every man has to make. And it puts that question there. Well, everybody knows this is here. And the question about it here at this point is not whether you agree or disagree, but what else is there? What else is there? You're up in the middle of the line. And there's not anything, incidentally, or you might put it outside this realm. You just find, you just find what you're up against. And you have to make a decision. Now, what is the last uh, 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 word that he used in the last sentence here? <coughs> God is the independent power beyond time, the master of the temporal, beyond the working in it. All right. Here he pulls uh, his final uh, togetherness through this, uh, or pulls his uh, final gestalt to where always this uh, power is there. Now let's go back and take a look. What does he point to here in five? What goes on in five? What? All right, now what takes place there? What, ha what happening happens? There's material power, yes, but now what goes on? Trying to ensure your future. All right, I'm trying to secure life, and what happens? All right, I run into my desk, so to speak, here in this story. But what else happens here? I keep right on. Yeah, well, in this story, what happens? What? Yeah, I run into my desk here in this story. So what else do I run into this story, Bob? You're the one that came through a while ago. <coughs> That which teach you to it. It's still a small voice and keeps driving. <laughs> In the story, what do we hear? Discover the contagion of souls. Yeah. All right, all right, okay, all right. At this point here, when this comes in, the fool is there uh, when you bump up against this limit. All right, now what in, in uh, eight do you see here? Excuse me. Uh, <coughs> five, seven. What do you see there? Powerless. What? Man, powerless. All right, all right. You see what you hear? This said, but Terry pronounced it, but even then, that moment just does not tarry here at this point. All right, now, what else do you see here at 11? Uh, question. <coughs> Can you differentiate between the temple and the eternal? Sense the temporal being that you cannot uh, prolong or cannot prolong the present. In other words, the present always goes into the past. And then on the other side, uh, the pleasure of eternity or the eternal, but you do not reach that future moment. It never comes. Mm -hmm. Are there those two dimensions there? Or are they the same thing? I guess, yes, probably so, but it could be the same. You could take it the other way, too. You cannot hold this. Uh, or you can't, can't hold it yeah, right. yeah. It's also that you can't find the answer. Yes. All right. Now here, what about in this one? What word is the key in this one? Where are we? In A. Nine. 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 Thank you. Blindness. Huh? A, a final solitude. All right. Now what about that final solitude? Yes, but what about it? <coughs> yes. In nine now, some lives are poor in friendship and some are 
Rich. 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 Ten and eleven, what does Faust wake up to see? That you get there's a foretaste of the sublime island. Okay. But you see, Faust, bang, here. It suddenly appears to him, so to speak, here. Now, what about eleven? Do you wake up? What does he say here now? Divested of his self determination. And then what's the next thing? Showing. Showing him. All right, okay. In every one of these things, you have not only here at this point where he's shoved up against the limit, but the fact that, my Lord, I have been, my eyes have suddenly awakened to the fact that I've been shoved up against the limit yeah. at that point. Everything is a breaking in in a, in a twofold. Yes. The horror for me about 11 is that this, you know, recalls him to everyday things. It puts him back to paragraph four again. Okay. All right. Now, uh, here, then you have this where he's shoved up against this and then pushed over against the other. Now, if you were going to say God the what here for 1 through uh, 12, what would you say? What would be the uh, some words that you could use? Indian giver. Indian giver? What? Torturer. Torturer. Okay, what else? 1 through 12, the whole article. God the what? Think. Think. <laughs> All right. Electrical shock. Electrical shock. The lover. The lover. Short circuiter. The short circuiter. The determiner. The, determiner. the what? The father. The father. Now, what would you be pointing to with that? That image. Order. Yeah, just a moment. We need to maybe take a look at that. What for the total thing now would you call it? Puppeteer. Huh? Puppeteer. Puppeteer. <coughs> Two face man. Two face man. A sustainer. Sustainer. It's the it's fist in the gut. All right. It's like a conveyor belt. belt. What? It's like a conveyor belt. Conveyor belt. All right, what would be some of your traditional words? The Almighty. What else? The All-Powerful. The All-Powerful. The Judge. The Judge. The Judge. The Judge. The King. The King. <coughs> the ruler of the Ruler. The Angry God. Uh, Alright, now we had a lot of those from 1 through 11. How would you restate it from, uh, I mean, 3 through 11, from 1 through 12? Holy other dash utterly present. All right. Creator. Creator. Uh, Alpha and Omega. Alpha yeah, and yeah. Omega. Okay, now if we take Harrison's thing of God the Redeemer over against God the Creator, how would you put that up here? Where would you put that schematically? Where would you schematically put the term God the Redeemer and God the, the Creator? Which paragraph? Well, which? Oh, Redeemer. 
You put the Redeemer in 12, huh? Where would you put the... Uh, the Creator would be the pushing up and the Redeemer would be the cutting off. Well, we're about three, an invisible point, about three feet out of the board, uh, coincidental with uh, say Mimi. <laughs> Which one? About four feet out there. And the lines, the lines would run back to uh, uh, that uh, aware and show. Yeah. Okay. All right. In other words, it's interesting. You have to meet, you meet God the Redeemer before you meet God the Creator. And without uh, one through uh, eleven here, there's no possibility of knowing uh, uh, what you need to be talking about without uh, some abstraction here. It's only when you're over against that final totality that the awareness is uh, breaking in for you. All right. Now. Uh, uh, obviously, the, uh, this has been called what throughout history by this? What the other name has been given to this? Faith. Faith. Destiny. Destiny. The up against this. The up against this. What other name? Void. What? Void. Void. God of the devil. The devil. We're talking about the devil. What? Are we talking about 3.11? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's the center part here. The total yeah, part. There. There. Okay, I don't think the, or the traditional names that have been given in the history of culture ideas of this. Now, today, uh, Beaumont wrote this. Uh, he uh, wrote uh, 3 through 11 here uh, uh, with uh, the uh, up againstness uh, in the sense of a final limiter, uh, the cutting off, in one sentence for this. Would you write it the same today if you were going to write the article? Where would you change this article if you were going to change it? And if you were going to talk about the one who forces you into life, the one who uh, shoves you, who puts, who puts, who gives, who places, uh, how would you put that in relationship to uh, the whole way in which uh, the person of God is raised? And finally, where you don't think you can see. What? So I would break the whole process, turn it up, turn it the other way around. Put the, put the, put the, the driving into each of the sections, and then put the second sentence of paragraph 12 into the, uh, the Well, I think we need to think of where we push in this area. Uh, this is uh, not the. Uh, related to this particular time of changing uh, what would be teaching because what we teach is what's there but we need to know where we would want to uh, push ourselves or where the question is coming in upon us or put it this way we need to see how we'd be operating out of uh, where the question of life is shoved at us to finally push to where the question of life is shoved here or to uh, how you would go about pointing to that uh, up against us with the term GOD. One of the dimensions that's not in here is the fact that we're given uh, the capacity to create so much of the future that we couldn't create in time, yet are up against the frightening possibility of our change and our lack of good. Perhaps more than anything. Yeah, lucidity is certainly there. But it doesn't get what you said. It's very interesting the way he ends here. He ends with B. Uh, if you hit the shot, you bounce back, and you're still looking at your this, and then he ends with B. It's got to give, 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 give. And that's where you're uh, where you see the this and bounce back. And there is B. Yeah, but you never see the B without what? Without your this. It would be interesting to take a look at paragraph 12 over there and then the patterns here to pull together. Care for the moral, the longing, the desire, the love, knowledge, and action all over here. 
the cutting off, the cutting off, the cutting off, the shoving, the cutting off, the cutting off, the cutting off. The cutting off. what he means to indicate by the category of God, he couldn't even begin to give this lecture. Now, in our time, relative to the question of God, there have been two master theological approaches. Now, these are the approaches behind the approaches. One is called valuational uh, theology. Now, I do not mean uh, when I say this is the master that this is something uh, that uh, just happened in the last few years. In the last hundred years is what I'm talking about. There have been two approaches to this. One is valuational theology, and the other is theological realism. Now, you'll see in a moment uh, how uh, we 
have operated in both and have tried to hold them, in fact, more than that, have been fanatics at holding uh, these uh, together. Like your Apostles' Creed does, I do not understand how anyone uh, uh, finds a, a, a offense at the Apostles' Creed. To me, it's one of the most fantastic bits of poetry uh, uh, with uh, the kind of poetic rationalism uh, that I have uh, never seen any place else. You take the beginning of it. I believe in God. That statement means nothing. And our fathers knew that that statement meant nothing. It puts what it's pointing to on the other side of it. I believe in God, the Almighty. The Almighty. That's the way you spell Almighty? The Almighty. I believe in the enigmatic power. Now, that is theological realism. It's just a thereness. But that statement is not adequate to articulate what we mean by God. We have to give that statement the value of God. And therefore, the Apostles' Creed says, the Father. And only when you have these two together do you know what you're pointing to when you use the term God. Now, in your Fultman paper, you point to an enigmatic power. That is the most important term in that whole paper. Enigmatic power. Enigmatic power. If you and if you who are teaching this paper have not taken that whole document together uh, into pieces, then you are not finally ready to be anywhere near a first teacher. I mean, you have to know what the students do not know. And one of the things you have to know is the rest of that paper down to A, B, C in it. The first part is the enigmatic power. The next part of the paper is that that power is our father or only when we address that power as our father that is give it the value of god are we pointing to what the christian church means to point to when it uses the verbal sign g-o-d now when we deal with the term god in the old term of the existential not in the existentialistic understanding of the word existential but in the old sense of that word, you first of all point to just a, a thereness. Just a thereness. And then, in the relational sense, you point to the value of God, or, and what word do you use here? The ultimate, or rather, my ultimate. And only when those two are together do you know what you're pointing to when you point to God. But that thereness always has the quality of the final. The absolute, I don't like that word because I do not mean it valuational. I mean the beyond which you cannot go. That's what the word here, almighty, means. The <coughs> final up againstness. I'll come back to enigmatic in, uh, in, in, in just a moment. That is your existential aspect of God and the relational aspect is the posture you take toward it. Now, Richard Niebuhr, I think you are pretty clear and you need to read over and over again that uh, article on, uh, what's the name of it? The nature, the nature, existence. The nature and existence of, of God. That's a far better paper than the Fultman paper is uh, in terms of our construct. The Fultman paper uh, does the job, I think, better. But Richard Niebuhr's paper is a far better paper. For he holds together there in that paper the, just, just the final thereness of life, beyond which the imagination of man cannot image. That's what you're really talking about. And then he holds together the valuational part. That is to say, when you draw this figure, which is one of the figures behind all of our uh, uh, lectures, 
that this this is you can be your mother uh, your nation some philosophical uh, point of view uh, your family uh, uh, etc anything here can have the value of god for a a a, a being and if that has the value of god then this is my god and by the value of god i mean that you bestow upon this the power to define your basic relationship. That's what you mean by him assigning the value of God. Now the term God, in, uh, in that use of it, means nothing whatsoever in one sense. You could say the value of X, but then you have to be using the word that culture understands to be assigning the ultimate relationship in life. That's what you mean by assigning the value of God. If you lived in a, 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 another a culture, you might say that you're assigning it the value of Brahman. Or in another case, you're assigning it the value of Yah. Or you're assigning it the value of El. Or, 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 or what have you. The ultimate value. Uh, and that means the power to define who you are or your relationship. This is what Luther uh, meant when he says, there is no Christ until Christ is my Christ, or what Wesley meant when he said, there is no God, save he become my God. The, he was dealing valuationally at that point. We hold these two theological approaches together. And from our point of view, you cannot finally be Christian. This is a heresy, and this is a heresy. When it's pulled apart, only when they're together are you talking about the Christian faith or are you talking about that reality that every man knows about. Value theology. And I think we need to be Theological awfully, real. awfully, awfully clear about that. But now when you talk about this reality, you have to put it in a sentence like, uh, like this. And I mean in terms of the fairness or the realistic uh, understanding <coughs> of what we mean by the term God. You have to have in your mind a statement something like this. The isness of the is notness of the is. Now this is what the term enigmatic power means. That is to say, I'm in the midst of a going onness at a given point. The is notness within that is, that is the isness of the is notness within that is is what you're talking about always when you use that final power. This is why in Bultmann, that if every time you point to the term God, you do not, <coughs> the way he does, you do not use that term, the enigmatic power that uh, calls me into question, then you are not hearing what Bultmann is talking about. Uh, and when you do not hear that, then you reduce this into a uh, that which is not God, which allows some ass out in the group to accuse you of pantheism. Do you understand that? Or they say, oh, uh -huh, you mean the world is God. Uh, and if you aren't clear in yourself, then you're going to walk into the trap just like that. That is to say that you must never lose the idea that what the first thing you point to in terms of realism is the mystery that does not go away, the incomprehensible that always remains incomprehensible or to put it in medieval language the essence of god is that he alone knows his own essence put in the 20th century uh, uh, language it means that finally the power that man is over against is beyond his ken if this power always meets us in a concrete everyday going to the toilet situation and no place else and this is incarnational uh, uh, thing uh, it, it, uh, what you mean by incarnational thinking now if you hold this together in terms of our high abstract category of relative to God which defines the recent theological uh, uh, grappling, then you have to think in terms of the category of being, in terms of the category of event, and in the terms of the category of address. And you know we put Tillich here. Now you translate that into this. This is the mystery. Or to put it another way, in hard-headed realistic, it's the way things are. 
That is to say that uh, in Bultmann's paper, he's not saying that uh, here you've got yourself a nice little dream out here and it gets cut off. No, no, he's not saying that. <coughs> he's saying that is the way life is. Do you understand that? That is the way life is. It's just not a happening in your life. Hell, that's the way life is. That is the mysterious power, the enigmatic power that he's going to point to in the term uh, God. But this way things are always meets you in a concrete situation. And here is Bullman's particular power and where his emphasis is. But he knows this, and that word enigmatic power points to it. It's, it's when uh, my particular longings are frustrated, my desire needs to be accepted, he is just cut off. I understand this, but I don't understand it yet. I've got to understand that in this, Joseph Wesley Matthews is addressed. That is to say, there isn't any God around. He, uh, uh, when uh, Henry over here, he is uh, frustrated with his law. No, 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 no. It's only when Joseph is called, when my life is cut off, that you're talking about God in uh, this particular sense. This holds these all three together. And throughout that whole paper, it seems to me in rather a, a remarkable, fantastic way, Bultmann holds that together. Now, maybe this is enough uh, 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 to say before I move where I want to move, but it's going to take some time. And I'm sure I'm going to be frustrated as hell. But let's look at that God lecture. Now, sometimes, We've used categories like this to build the lecture. These are the abstract categories, and this in terms of the old mood, as we call it, for the category of non-being, and here is the new mood for the category of being. Now, in a way, this is built the same way, but I push these off to the side, and this is the <coughs> inclusive categories of being, and this is the inclusive category of, of, of non-being. I wish I had more blackboard, but I don't. Now, <coughs> different people in our midst give this lecture in different ways. And that's fine. creativity uh, that, uh, that uh, comes out. This has nothing to do with whether you steal Slicker's uh, 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 illustration of the long-necked uh, girl or whether you use uh, uh, the nine months in the womb. Uh, that has nothing to do with creativity. When somebody gets worried about that, then you know damn well uh, that they disclose themselves as having no creativity. The creativity is how you take that, that long neck girl belongs to me. Do you not understand that? He, she was my friend. I saw her. I don't even remember her, but she is mine. Uh, uh, she belongs to me. Uh, uh, just like uh, this here, which finally came from Augustine. Doesn't belong to Augustine. Hell, that's my trademark. Uh, 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 uh. But your being gets in it. Now, your creativity is how you pull out of these boxes and weave it uh, together into an edifying discourse or to a great and a mighty work of art. And I'm going to put a lot more up here on the board uh, than uh, you would have time to use, and certainly uh, a lot more uh, than, uh, than I use. But the important thing is that you have, a, uh, have it in your background, in your head. For if you have it in your head, it gets communicated. Do you understand that? In your art form, even though you do not mention a word of it. All right. Now you begin uh, 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 with the external situation, and on this side, it's the passing 
of the old world. This is the external situation. Over here, it's the emerging of 